Previously, we discussed the details of a synapse, and the synapse we focused on was the neuromuscular junction. This is the synapse between a neuron and our muscle cell. Now, at the synapse, at the neuromuscular junction, we have the signal transduction process taking place. So this basically means we pass down the electrical signal from the neuron to our muscle cell. Now, how exactly does this actually take place? Well, let's take a look at the following diagram and recap. Basically, the action potential travels down the axon of the neuron and to the axon terminal. This is the axon terminal of the presynaptic neuron cell. Now, once the action potential arrives, it indirectly causes the release of these synaptic vesicles that carry a special type of chemical known as neurotransmitter. And the specific type of neurotransmitter involved in the neuromuscular junction is acetylcholine. So acetylcholine is released into this space known as our synaptic cleft and it goes on and binds to a receptor protein channel found on the muscle cell, the postsynaptic membrane. So it binds onto these channels, it causes these channels to open up and there is an influx of these sodium ions into the cell and that causes the process of depolarization of the membrane and that essentially creates an action potential. And this is what we mean by the signal transduction process. So our electron potential or our um, action potential, the electric signal is, tran is transduced it's passed down from our presynaptic cell indirectly to the postsynaptic cell. Now notice this electrical signal doesn't actually travel directly from the presynaptic cell to the postsynaptic cell. Instead we have this intermediate molecule, the neurotransmitter, that actually passes down that electrical signal. So this neurotransmitter in this type of pathway is known as the first messenger or the primary messenger molecule. Now, also notice that this neurotr uh, neurotransmitter doesn't actually go inside the cell of the muscle cell. Instead, it stays on the outside. It attaches onto the receptor of the protein membrane found on the extracellular side of that membrane. And in most cases, this is what takes place. In most cases, our first messenger doesn't actually go into our cell and create that response. Now, in the pathway that we described the, uh, so far, this pathway involves only our first messenger and the first messenger binds and causes that action potential to take place. Now, in most other signal transduction processes, we have the use of another molecule known as the secondary messenger. And these types of pathways are known as secondary messenger systems. And secondary messenger systems are most often controlled by special protein complexes that involve G protein. So, what exactly is the pathway of such a signal transduction process? Process. So let's take a look at the following paragraph and then let's look at a specific example of a secondary messenger system. So our complex of proteins usually contains a transmembrane protein that is found on the membrane of that cell, the receptor cell, that contains a binding site for the ligand and the ligand is the first messenger molecule. Now this binding site is usually found on the extracellular side of the membrane as in this case. So what happens is, once our first messenger binds to our transmembrane protein, on the other side of that transmembrane protein, we have other proteins attached, as we'll see in just a moment. And once our first messenger actually binds to our transmembrane protein, it causes the dissociation of one of these proteins, and usually it's the G protein. Now, once our G protein 
protein detaches, it can go on and do several things. So it can activate other protein channels, it can activate our secondary messenger molecules, or it can go on and activate other enzymes. And it can also go on and actually transcribe genetic information, as we'll see in a future lecture when we get into biochemistry. So let's take a look at a specific secondary messenger system that involves the activation of a protein known as protein kinase A. So recall in our discussion of enzymes that protein kinase A is a special type of enzyme that catalyzes the phosphorylation of other proteins to activate those proteins. So let's take a look at the following membrane. So this is the cytoplasm of our cell. This is the phospholipid bilayer of that receptor cell. It's the membrane. And this is the extracellular environment. So usually our primary, um, our primary messenger is some type of neurotransmitter or some type of hormone. In this case, the hormone is epinephrine. So basically what happens is we have the epinephrine, we have have the transmembrane protein, our protein that basically goes on from the outside to the inside of the cell through the membrane shown in green. And on the inner portion of the membrane, on the cytoplasmic side of this transmembrane known as beta adrenergic receptor, we basically have a complex of other proteins. We have the alpha subunit, the beta subunit, and the gamma subunit. And the alpha subunit, as well C is our G protein. So on a different section of that membrane, we have another type of protein that is involved in this activation process in the secondary messenger system process. This is known as the adenylate cyclase protein. So let's actually take a look and see what happens during our secondary messenger system signal transduction. So basically some type of cell, some type of gland in our body releases this whole hormone known as epinephrine. Eventually, this epinephrine reaches the receptor of that specific cell. And that receptor is found on the membrane. So this is the protein complex. The green is our beta adrenergic receptor. It contains the receptor that basically binds our epinephrine. So when the epinephrine binds to this section, it basically causes the alpha subunit to decrease its affinity for the beta subunit and the alpha subunit. And, and what happens is our G, uh, GDP, which is the guanosine diphosphate, is converted into the guanosine triphosphate or GTP. And that decreases the affinity of the alpha subunit, our G protein. And this goes on and binds onto this adenylate cyclase. And once it binds onto our adenylate cyclase, it causes is the conversion of ATP adenosine triphosphate to cyclic adenosine monophosphate or CAMP. And then this is our secondary messenger. So our epinephrine is the primary or first messenger involved in the signal transduction process. And this is the second molecule involved. And so this is called our uh, secondary messenger. And the secondary messenger, our cyclic AMP goes on and activates protein kinase A so that now protein kinase A can go on and phosphorylate other enzymes inside our cell. So this is one specific example of a secondary messenger pathway. This is the pathway by which we pass down signals from one cell to a different cell in the body. So in this case, we only had one intermediate molecule involved, the neurotransmitter. In this case, we had two. We had our epinephrine was the first messenger or the primary messenger and the secondary messenger was our cyclic AMP. So once again, Protein kinase A, the enzyme that phosphorylates other proteins in the cell, can be activated through a secondary messenger system. 
Now, the first messenger is in this signal transduction pathway is the hormone, also known as a neurotransmitter in some cases, is our epinephrine, also called adrenaline. It binds to a transmembrane protein called the beta adrenergic receptor, and this causes a conformational change, a, a change in shape of this transmembrane protein, which forces our alpha subunit, our G protein to change the GDP to GTP. This decreases the affinity of our alpha subunit to this, this, and this section, so it detaches, this dissociates, this goes on and binds onto the adenylene cyclase, and that causes the transformation of ATP molecules to CAMP molecules, cyclic AMP. And then the secondary messenger, our cyclic AMP goes on and activates protein kinase A. So in this process, we basically transduce, we pass down a signal from one cell to a different cell and tell that cell to basically activate protein kinase A so that the cell can use protein kinase A and activate other proteins involved in other processes.